Chapter 13 Tying the Knot Bella's Point of View I could not help but cry. My boyfriend, he was cheating on me. If I broke up with him, there would be no one else. I would be alone. My mom was playing on her Xbox 2556. I could not play mine. I was too sad to. I remember Fraser and how he lies. Then, oh, what I've done to Tony. The secret that he told me. The things we did. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. The f then my phone rang. I picked it up. It was my boyfriend. Bella, I need to talk to you. I stayed quiet. I'm breaking up with you. What? For her? Are you fucking kidding me? I felt my tears running down my face. The pain I felt was horrible. You know what, John? I... I... He cut me off. You need to calm down, Bella. Look, my love for you is just not there. You just don't click. I'm sorry. Goodbye. He hung up. That's it, I yelled. I got up and my mom just left. Only a couple minutes. So I got... Only a couple minutes. Sorry, I had to read that again. I lost my place. So I laid down and I pleasured the fuck out of myself. Then when I thought enough was enough, I got up to sail without pants. Not even caring, I ran into the kitchen. Why? You don't... Oh, crap. Um, um... There we go. Ah. Anyways. My sister was heating pizza in the microwave. I opened the drawer to my right and I grabbed the frying pan and I ran up and bashed her in the head with it. She hit the ground like a dead body. But I checked if she was alive. She was. I drug a chair back into my room and I ran back into the kitchen. Night sis. Love you. Goodbye. And I kissed her forehead. Now I ran back to my room. I pushed my pillows and my stuff animals off the bed where the bed sheets were left. I ripped them off and I ran over to the light switch and turned off the fan. I went back to the bed and I pulled it out. I jumped up on the bed and attempted to tie the sheets to the fan. Then I gave up so I took off my shirt and successfully tied it. I used I used my bra to fortify it. Then I pushed the bed back. Then I jumped, having a O-shaped hook catching my neck. It hurt really badly. Then I took my last breath. After pulling myself up, I left. I let go. And I hung there. Well, no! I saw my sister, but everything was just black and white. Then, and that's the end of the chapter. So, we just found out that Tony's ex committed suicide, and now he's gonna have to come up with coping with this loss of a lo old friend. And and Zelda has a plan, has a plan for him. Um. So, yeah. Uh, let's see how long this chapter is. Alright. Because we're getting to where I'm still writing the book. I mean, we'll read one more chapter since I haven't been doing a lot lately. It'll be a longer episode. But, that's what you guys want. That's what you guys like. <laughs> chapter 14. My decision. Tony's POV. We were back in my room. I was undressed, so was Zelda. She was on top of me, sleeping. I grabbed her ass, waking her. So he had fun when I was gone. Tony, I love you. I can't help it. I know we're not supposed to have any emotions, but... I do. I'm feeling that I do. Shh. I rubbed her back a little. Bell... Er, 
I I mean Zelda. I love Kendra. I'm sorry, but I need to have somebody that will be, you know, real. I interrupted. No. Hole. I stay I stared into her green eyes, then laid back down. She laid on top of me. I seen what you asked Kendra. She said. Yeah, and? She exhaled and said, You don't know when a girl says no, do you? Yeah, it's when she says no. No, 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 no. You're wrong. If a girl cares for your feelings and does not want to hurt them, then they would say something like, I don't usually do this, or, and we would say at the same time. Some other time? Yeah, exactly. Damn it, Kendra. I closed my eyes. I started to cry, then I fell asleep. I woke up, and Zelda was gone. I was in my sparry armor. It was 5 a.m., so I had to do my daily routine. When I said bye to my mom at 6.20, I sprinted to the stop and waited. And I waited, and I waited. The color came without anybody else there. I got in and sat down. The other students were in the Pelican, but not the ones from my stop. So we went to the school, and I went to the gym. I talked to my friends, then we walked to my lock. Then I walked to my wa I walked to my locker. <laughs> Put uh, now I lost my place. Oh, put my stuff away, and then I walked to my. Uh, to the chorus room. Man, I'm, I can't read. You know what? I can't read. Want to read this? No? Why not? I'm stupid. I did not see Kendra. Nowhere. Weird. She's always here. For fear it came around. She wasn't there. So I thought she was sick. Then I did my history work. Six period came around. And I started talking to Sarah. Man, I still need to make a choice. About what? She replied. I had to turn someone into a Spartan. She laughed. Who would want all that attention? Who would even be suitable? We kind of sat there and listened to the conversations around us. Kendra! Why? I asked. One, you like her. Two, Halsey is her haunt. Wait, 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 wait. The Catherine Halsey is her aunt. Damn, then. Looks like I have no choice. Well, if that's true, first I'll ask to make sure. Then I'll make her a Spartan. Not sure if it's the perfect idea, but I'll shoot for it. And that's it. That's it what we got for today. And I'm still writing the next chapter, so we're gonna have to stop there. Um I hope you guys like the story so far. Sorry for my low reading skills. I my handwriting is atrocious. And I'm writing in pen to make it like so I, I can read it better. But it still doesn't seem to be working all that much. So, trust me, um, it, it should be a good story, nonetheless, of my bad storytelling. I should actually be typing this, but I don't want to sit there and type all day. Uh, I think it'd be easier if I just wrote it. Anyways, um, see you guys later, and, uh, bye.